And so the fact that you're worried about it can be an indication that you're already infected to some degree and that's going to affect your reality if you let it. But this is why these, call them whatever, negative entities or the forces of evil or the wicked frequencies, they really are, at the end of the day, uh, the greatest teacher for people who are deliberately on the path of positive acceleration. Because you get to pause and see and at an accelerated pace, have it revealed to yourself where you're being weak. Whereas without those catalysts, you would not be as exposed. You wouldn't notice it. You wouldn't notice the pervasiveness of such susceptibilities. Well, in a sense, it's both a much bigger problem than that, and also much less of an issue. So it's bigger because I've been writing an address, which I may publish soon on this topic. But the, um, the evil of which you speak, so to say, exists as a vibration, first and foremost. And it lives in all of us, through all of us, I should say. And so really the best place to make ourselves and our reality immune to this is to perch this, perch the weaknesses that we have towards this within ourselves. And when I say that, I don't just mean what most people think of as evil, which is like, oh, somebody's going out to murder someone, or someone's going out to deliberately um, suppress uh, half the population. And that's why I say it's a much bigger problem than that is because it's much more pervasive. It's not that it's a bigger problem. It's actually simpler to solve. But at the same time, it's more pervasive. It's more all over the place, you could say. It's more interwoven into every human being's behavior, thoughts, beliefs, and so forth. So in that sense, the evil you speak of is much broader it's not necessarily a bigger problem, although you could define it as such as well, but it's pervasive. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's scope is broad. It's influences is far reaching. In fact, it's influences everywhere. However, it's only influencing where it can find a foothold. My experience has always been that if I don't have a weakness or a susceptibility towards that particular frequency, call it wickedness or evil. I like the word wickedness. So I feel wholly imperviable in, is that a word? Imperviable? Imper impervious? Impervious. And non-permeable. So I guess I made up a new word, imperviable. But impervious and non-permeable to these forces, even if they're more or less in my phase, when I have no weakness of that nature. So the greatest weakness and their greatest strength, insofar as there even is an actual evil front that's attempting to control things, which there is because all things exist and that exists too. But it's not as big of a deal, although it is all pervasive. So it's a bit of a paradox. But my experience has been that I can be confronted with such a force, whether subtle or overt, whether physical or subtle. And the only way my reality would be 
affected. Doesn't mean I can't observe it, doesn't mean I can't feel it, but the only way it would affect me, and you could almost say infect me, and therefore affect my reality. If something infects me, if an idea, there's an inception of an idea, if there is an infection, then that will affect my world because I'm creator of my reality. So I could steal, even if I'm not affected, if I'm not infected with a negative idea, let's say, and therefore it's not affecting what I'm creating, doesn't mean I can't see some of the symptoms uh, in the world or even in my world. Doesn't mean I can't see some of those signs and acknowledge them. However, it doesn't feel like it's affecting my reality. And for the most part, it actually isn't. Not practically, not logistically. Um, and so on and so forth. So your life, again, is a reflection of yourself. And so this is why it's a bigger problem and less of a problem, because if you don't give these ideas any weakness of yours, if you don't let them infect you, then they don't have a power to lock you down. And weaknesses are subtle things, and that's why it's a bigger problem than we realize, is because it's all over the place and it's all within ourselves. And literally, at the end of the day, any tiny little negative thought is those bad guys you're talking about. And so you can witness yourself and see how many negative thoughts you are tolerating. And then you'll get sort of a gauge on how influential, uh, sorry, how influenceable you are. And so the fact that you're worried about it can be an indication that they already got you by the balls to some degree and that you're already infected to some degree and that's going to affect your reality if you let it. But this is why these, call them whatever, negative entities or the forces of evil or the wicked frequencies, they really are, at the end of the day, uh, the greatest teacher for people who are deliberately on the path of positive acceleration. Because you get to pause and see, and at an accelerated pace, have it revealed to yourself where you're being weak. Whereas without those catalysts, you would not be as exposed. You wouldn't notice it. You wouldn't notice the pervasiveness of such susceptibilities. So my strongest recommendation first and foremost recommendation. I'm not saying we can't acknowledge that the world is fucking going to shit. Uh, we can recognize that in terms of human society, like the idi idiocy of it all and the ridiculous trends that are happening and what have you. All the confusion, the mass confusion. We can acknowledge that. There's nothing wrong with that. But if it gets to a point where you feel afraid of what's to come or some kind of a prediction that was made by someone. It gives you an opportunity to see where you've bought into an idea of weakness, for instance, that someone else, not you, is the creator and attractor and configurer and decider of your reality which of course is a nasty feeling. And this is the very thing that you fear and that most people fear is that there can be an oppression from the outside. Now I'm not saying there is no effect called being oppressed. There is, there definitely is. So I acknowledge that, but I'm saying it comes from within. I'm saying it actually is the result of our weaknesses or susceptibilities. And so again, what I mean by weakness is your proclivity or your availability to listen to a negative belief, a negative idea, a lack-based perspective. Literally, that's what a weakness is. A weakness is our willingness to consider, to entertain, to enjoy, slash suffer, same thing, but we're enjoying it. Whatever we suffer, we're enjoying. We don't realize that, but the drama, you know, oh no, oh no, we're choosing to enjoy it. We're choosing to suffer it, therefore we're choosing it as our form of enjoyment or entertainment. 
So as long as we're entertained by a perspective rooted in lack, lack of empowerment, lack of divinity, lack of I am God or I am, to that degree, are we influenceable? And to that degree, can we be infected? And to the degree that we take on some idea, even if it's quote unquote offered by, although everything is one at the end of the day, but let's say it's offered by a being with a negative intent, or let's say it's fed to us through the media by some kind of an apparatus that is an agent of some negative intent or some negatively intending group of people or beings. Let's say that's the case. And I think it is in the relative realm of things then you are being faced with such ideas. You're being spoon fed those ideas, many of which since early childhood. So you can be forgiven for that. However, it is still our responsibility. It is still our ability to respond. As soon as we're aware that I am, we are responsible for every thought we accept. It might sound a little harsh, but it's unfortunately true. It's just the metaphysics of life. As soon as you are aware of I am, the mechanics of reality don't care about your naivety or your lack of education. You are responsible for whatever you think and believe and act out from that point onwards. And it has its effects. It leaves its, its reverberations, if you will, or its karmic reflections. But we can deal with all these things and we can release all these things very quickly if we have forgiveness, empowerment, and a true vision of God at the heart of who we are. We can forgive ourselves. We can forgive quote unquote, forgive our sins, and we can quote unquote, forgive our weaknesses, our susceptibilities, our naiveties, our ignorance. Because for the most part, we're very well intentioned beings, but still we can choose to be infected by negative beliefs. It's very easy to do so. That's why I say it's a rampant issue. It's far more widespread than we think, whereas often people have this image like, hey, we're the good guys, and we're being oppressed by the one percenters. No, actually, the one percenters are just enjoying, they're just smarter than us, but they're in the same game. They're playing the same game of negativity, but they're just a little smarter. They're reaping the rewards. But you guys are agents. We are all agents of the negative as well, if we're letting ourselves buy into these ideas. Of course, it's not our conscious intent, but we are acting as such when we believe, when we buy into a fear-based idea.